The quotient remainder theorem says not only that there exist quotients and remainders, but also that the quotient and remainder of a division are unique. Prove the uniqueness. That is, prove that if A and D are integers with D positive, and if Q1, R1, Q2, and R2 are integers, such that A equals DQ1 plus R1, where 0 is less than or equal to R1, which is less than D, and A equals DQ2 plus R2, where 0 is less than or equal to R2, less than D, then Q1 is the same thing as Q2, and R1 is the same thing as R2. This is basically showing that when you use the quotient remainder theorem, you get a unique quotient and a unique remainder. You can't get two different quotients or two different remainders from the quotient remainder theorem. Okay, so here's what we're going to assume in our proof. This is a proof by contradiction, so we're assuming the negation of our claim is true. That in fact, we have two different solutions, and at the end, we're gonna contradict ourselves by showing that these two supposedly different solutions are actually the same solution in disguise, meaning that there's only one solution and not two. So this is our assumption. By substitution, we can plug dq1 plus r1 into a to get that dq1 plus r1 equals dq2 plus r2. Next, we're gonna use algebra to simplify this by bringing the remainders on the right-hand side and the quotients on the left-hand side. We can continue to simplify this by factoring a D on the left-hand side. Now, without loss of generality, we can assume that the second remainder is at least as large as the first remainder. And if that's not the case, then we can swap the letters around so that this proof works. So this assumption here is without loss of generality. And from here, we can subtract R1 on both sides to get that R2 minus R1 is greater than or equal to zero. But at the same time, R2 is less than D, which means we can subtract both sides by R1 to get that R2 minus R1 is less than D minus R1, which is at most D. And so if we combine both of these inequalities here, we can sandwich this difference. The difference of the remainders is somewhere between zero and D. And that's important here because now we have that the difference between these remainders is some multiple of D, but at the same time, the difference of remainders is in between zero and D. There's only one number in this inequality that is a multiple of D, and that is specifically zero. So the only multiple of D in this range here is specifically zero, since the next multiple of D after zero is D and that's already too big. So these two facts mean that R2 minus R1 equals zero. And if we add R1 to both sides, we get that R2 equals R1. That was half of what we needed to show here, that R1 equals R2. The next thing we need to show is that Q1 equals Q2. But now we know that R2 minus R1 is zero. So we can rewrite this equation here as D times Q1 minus Q2 equals zero. Now what's important here is that D is positive, which means we can divide both sides by D. We need to make sure that D is non-zero because we can't divide by zero on both sides. So this means that we know that Q1 minus Q2 equals zero divided by D, but since D is non-zero, this means that the right-hand side is just zero, and now we can add Q2 to both sides to show that Q1 equals Q2. And now we've shown that the remainders and the quotients are equal. Thanks everyone and I'll see you in the next video.